You are listening to the MS Power User Podcast. This is episode 46, recorded Thursday, May 4th. Each week on this podcast, we discuss the latest news about Microsoft, including Surface, Xbox, Mixed Reality, Mobile, and of course, Panos Pene. Today, we will dig into a whole bunch of stuff. If you have kept up on the top news this week, even in the slightest, you can probably guess what our main topics are going to be. I will not detail them now. My name is Vernon E. L. Smith, and I'm joined, as usual, by Andy Bennett. How are you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing good, although there is a bit of a t- uh, mistake in our introduction script. Uh-oh. It's not actually Panos Panay, it's Tony Stark. Oh, my my bad. He is his pseudonym. Okay. Well, we will, uh, he, re- he responds to both. <laughs> <laughs> that, that The similarities just always astound me. It's amazing. But uh, on the actual intro subject... I'm doing well. I mean, this has been a really nice week so far, if you can ignore the fact that it's just way too cold, out of the blue. (laughs) It went from like 70 degrees to 50, and I'm still trying to to cope with that. And it's also rainy as well, so that doesn't really help. I bought my wife a new car. Well, it's not completely paid for yet, and she's uh, obviously contributing, but it's nice for uh, the man of the house to say, I bought my wife a new car. Um, and the first day, the no, second day she drove it, uh, it was, it blizzarded. We had snow and the car she, we got her was certainly not a, a snow happy car. So she was a little bit challenged that way, but my week, uh, started off crazy that way and it has continued. Uh, I am dead tired. It's been a lot of fun though. The Microsoft, uh, education event, uh, was pretty cool. And of course, the device and saw and um, uh, OS version that was announced uh, was pretty cool, and we're going to talk about that and more today. So, yeah, I guess we're, I guess uh, we're uh, getting started. Which, yeah, on a Tuesday this week, I well, I guess I'll handle this. On Tuesday this week, Microsoft held an event called Microsoft EDU. They announced this previously, and we believe this would be the event where they would just take on Chromebooks. They did far more than that, however, and uh, Vernon will get into some of it, so will I, but the main announcement of it all, after, it's amazing, despite being called Microsoft EDU, the biggest announcement came after the education stuff was done, and uh, Vernon, do you want to talk about the education stuff first, or do we go to the big thing that most people probably already know about? Well, I always like to, to look at the events themselves. Microsoft does a great job of streaming these events live. Um, and of course, if you're, you're there, you get to see the experience, you know, experience is similar, not, not always, um, the same, but I love the, <clears throat> I love I, some of the things that we saw, I just wanted to point out. And I, and I think it's so, so interesting in some cases, at least, first of all, there were, there were a lot of women presenters and, uh, the tech community really latches onto that and they compare it to other um, you know, like Apple, for example, or Google or whatever. And it's a little bit of competition back and forth. And this is probably the 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 most uh, female-leaning presenters that they had. I think it was just only three or possibly four males. Uh, and then uh, the rest that demoed all this stuff were females. And that's really good uh, as far as uh, that little bit of competition between the bigger companies. Now, personally... I especially liked the demo from the Microsoft's um, chief experience officer, Megan Saunders. And first of all, um, if you remember back to the, which event was it? The uh, creators update event. She was the one that demoed the Sandcastle with the Elite X3 and how the the mixed reality uh, took a, you know, captured a 3D. That actually kind of reminds me that uh, that stuff still isn't there. Correct. That uh, that app she demoed. (laughs) Which that's kind of sad. Yeah, um, it's not there. But uh, Megan Saunders does stand out. She is actually tall, and I would, in my opinion, a beautiful human being. And uh, she did a fantastic job. Probably, I would say, the best job presenting her her spiel. Um, maybe right up there with um, Panos Pene, of course, who did a fantastic job. We'll get into that too. One of the things that she demoed was a mixed reality demo. <laughs> well, uh, with the Mars rover, which was, I thought was really interesting. Um, was it ex- 
um, fantastically technical or mind blowing that way, but it kind of reminded everybody that the Mars rover isn't this tiny little Lego thing that's like seven feet tall. And I thought that was really, that was kind of cool. Next up, Terry Meyerson. He's been leading the Windows team for a long time, uh, you know, whatever, at least five years, and that feels like a very long time. And the dude has lost some weight. Man, he looks sharp. It's um, really trimmed down. And he, he always does a, a pretty good, I'll say he uh, he tries pretty hard at presenting, and he often succeeds. And I think this time, um, well, I know that his teleprompter, at least one of his teleprompters failed. And so he did uh, stumble through it a little bit, but did a good job despite that, I think. Yeah, he, yeah, he did a good presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that was very noticeable, we talked about this a couple episodes ago, Andy, is that uh, we expected Joe Belfiore to be there, uh, especially because he is now the education oh, advocate or something like that. And uh, coincidentally, or oddly, I should say, he was at the event. He just was in the uh, in the audience. He was not uh, presenting anything. So I was confused by that. I was I was surprised, but I think I will somehow survive. I do miss Joe B. I would love it. I mean, man, I would just be tickled pink, and so many Win fans would be too, if he was the one to bring back whatever the next version of whatever we might call uh, mobile for Windows. That would be really cool. Panos Panay, of course, was awesome. He's always very good. He demoed the hardware, did a fantastic job, demoed some of the software too, and he loves to get out into the crowd. He has a, 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 a good dynamic play back and forth with some of the, the um, tech, tech people, the, the journalists, and even Brad Sams uh, had, they <laughs> kind of had something going on in the last few events, and this time he picked someone right next to Brad Sams to give this new device to, not to keep, but to go to go play with. And I thought that, for one, it was great to see Brad uh, trying to get a selfie during the presentation. <laughs> was like, kinda... that, that shot was really funny because, like, there was just, a, like, a cluster of people that I follow on Twitter, basically. There was oh, yeah. Brad, there was Brad, there was Paul, then there's Richard Hay, who, uh, let's see, what, it was the New York event when you did, like, a, kind of like a half episode with him, and that was fun. Yeah, it was a quick little episode with horrible audio, and I apologize for that. But um, that still, was still was cool. a good listen, though. Yeah, Rich Hay is fantastic. He's just a treasure trove of knowledge, and we oh, got a lot sure. of respect for him. Uh, Rich Woods was there um, with the uh, with the group there, Dan, Dan, and Mark, Dan Rubino and Mark Wim. Uh, we saw a good shot of the backs of their heads, <laughs> um, <laughs> which are becoming famous backs of head backs. But um, that was really cool to see that whole group of people over in the press side. And then, of course, there was the general audience, which was kind of down the middle. Uh, whatever. Not worth dwelling on, but I thought it was very interesting. Alpanos went to the audience, uh, gave this this n new device to this, um, I think she was a teacher, who was using a MacBook. And he had a little bit of a banter back and forth about, or basically just gave her a little crap about using um, a Mac, I don't know, MacBook Air or Pro or something. Um but that yeah, was kind of cool. Yeah, I guess it's time to kind of talk about uh, what he gave her, though, which is the Surface laptop. This was announced at the end of the event after all the education stuff. And so this is kind of I don't I don't want to say it's unex, I don't want to say it's unexpected, but I don't know how many people were expecting it. I mean, there were rumors that the Surface Book 2 would be a clamshell laptop and that Microsoft was already preparing them. People shot that down as just a crazy rumor that would never happen. But the thing is, those clam those clamshell laptops were being produced. They were just not being produced as a Surface Book. And this is the and they were it turned out to be the Surface laptop, which got unveiled at the event. And this is and this runs another thing that Microsoft announced, which is Windows 10 S, which we'll touch on more later. But to sum it up, it is what it is Windows 10 Cloud's final name. Anyways, though. The Surface Laptop, when when going into this event, people expected Chromebook competitors, which they did announce. They announced a bunch of laptops running Windows 10 S that started at $189. I, I don't know if they specifically announced the devices. They just said that well, they're coming, they, right? Yeah, they said that they're coming, and uh, I believe it was HP who lowered the price of the uh, Stream 11 Pro with Windows and added Windows 10 S to it, I think. Nice. 
but yeah, they've got they got a bunch of uh, cheap devices on the way for schools that come with Windows 10s. But the Surface laptop is different. It's not aimed at your grade school or high school kids. This is aimed at college students, and it's designed to compete with the MacBook Air, not Google's Chromebooks. And of course, the big difference on that is price. This is this is a device that starts at a thousand dollars. It's got the Surface name on it. It's very very nice looking. It is a high quality device that you will get a high quality presumably experience from. And uh, yeah, it's it comes in uh, four different colors. It should be available, you know, next next month. I believe it's June fifteenth when it launches. And it'll be and it will ship with Windows ten s, which is a little weird for a thousand dollar device keep in mind windows 10s is a more limited version of windows you can't change the default browser you can't change your search engine you you can't run apps that are outside of the store at all be they uwp or win32 it's really weird i think they are offering a free upgrade to windows 10 pro from windows 10 cloud or, or i'm sorry windows 10s i gotta get used to that but they are offering a free upgrade to windows 10 pro for that device until until 2017 ends. And then when it does end, it's only a $49 cost to upgrade, which, excuse me, the cost to upgrade from Windows 10 Home to Windows 10 Pro is $100. So 50 is a bit more manageable, and if you can bear to spend 1000 on a laptop, then maybe it's not the biggest issue in the world, but it just does seem bizarre. Keep in mind, this isn't a hardware limitation like Windows RT. Windows RT ran on ARM processors. This is something that will run on any de any device you know that's capable of running regular Windows, presumably. And it's just a pure software limitation. I get what they're going for with it. I mean, it's supposed it's kind of like the operating system attempt to compete with Chrome Chrome OS, but I don't know. Maybe Vernon has a, a take that he can share on why it's okay <laughs> to include a lockdown operating system on a device that costs a thousand dollars even if the upgrade is free for a while and then cheap afterwards i i mean at that point it becomes why not just include pro on it well first of all they could have made a really really awesome uh you know make another uh, market or what do you want to call it category defining device they could have made this thing really awesome and they could have, they could have you know barely made a profit and sold it for 1200 bucks or something and really you know for example they could have included all the newer ports they could have had you know different you know like sd card support things like that they could have put an lte chip in it they could have done all these really amazing things and uh put it at a price that they didn't have to make a lot of money at and would have really ticked off their OEM partners. Now, this device is still competing pretty directly with many OEM devices, but it's not its not whooping them. It is actually a little bit, uh, I mean, as far as the ports, it's, it's let's not, just go with it's that. It's not competition if we don't want anyone to buy it. Uh, yeah, uh, it is a little bit behind in some ways if you think about um, future-proofing it. If you think about uh, there's no USB Type-C, uh, there's only one um, USB uh, 3.0 uh, port on it. And I should say, actually, I did a very, very quick video with my Lumia 950, so it sounds and looks horrible. But uh, at the Microsoft Store, I did a quick hands-on for like a minute and a half and uh, with my kids running around in the background. But uh, you can see the colors. That's kind of the big thing. You can see how far that it tilts back. Um, you can see the ports. And there's also a very interesting, odd, like, rubber piece next to the ports on the side. So that is – I don't know what that is yet anyway. But you can check out the video if you want. Um, it's, it's also kind of interesting that this can be opened with uh, just one finger. That's all you need to – that's all it takes to open this thing up, which uh, my younger brother, who uh, Verna knows about. But anyways, my younger brother – was watching this event with me you know he just kind of stopped by and uh, looked at what was on my screen and he and uh, he has a kind of clunky old hp laptop he uses yeah weekly i guess well so anyways as uh, you know panos has the surface laptop on stage and he just opens it up with one finger my brother is just like whoa what and so i guess maybe that's a detail that will highlight some of it for some when uh say maybe someone's someone's at a meeting people for 
lunch or whatever. Maybe they'll bring their laptops. Again, this is aimed at college students, so maybe they'll go to go to a place to have lunch and also study together or work on a class project together or whatever. And, uh, you know, just open up that laptop with one finger. Hey, what's that? Well, that is kind of cool. And, of course, Panos made a point. Everything he talks about is just so elaborate. He gets so into it. And he does it, He does so well with it that it doesn't often feel like overkill. He does such a good job presenting this as he always does. And it's you know, it, it's worth watching it just for the, the entertainment value of that. And that is my, my favorite part that he talks about is the when you close the lid to the laptop and he wanted the correct sound similar to how the surface the original surface uh, um, kickstand had a, a certain click to it and he wanted that to sound like a car door closing sort of and he just says something like okay when you close the lid of this there's no rubber bumpers or anything we want to make sure that when you close it you have closure we all want a little bit of closure in life right and uh, <laughs> that type of thing is why people like us talk about Panos so much. He's just awesome that way, and um, whatever. But of course, he had a pretty pretty awesome device too. Back yeah, I mean, to... he's he's a great designer and a great presenter. I mean, yeah. the, he's he's just fantastic all around and easily one of the best public figures at Microsoft. I think. I agree. Uh, back to what I was trying to say about the device itself competing or not competing with its OEM uh, partners or competitors. Um, we had sort of predicted, or I had predicted uh, incorrectly, that this would try to uh, define the category, redefine the category, and definitely have something, you know, gimmick is the wrong word, but something new about it, even if it's like, you know, different way that the display pops off or something like that. And it certainly didn't. It's your typical clamshell, and it's, um, I think it's wise actually to not go nuts with this because they really shouldn't they should let the laptops and two-in-one oems really take off with this and let them make windows 10 and windows 10 s uh great or whatever and um so and i think next year whatever when they iterate on this it's very simple then they could put in type um usb type c or then they could put in a maybe a micro sd card reader or you know whatever they can they can continue with this um I do have to. I, I do will say this kind of opens a few doors that I'm interested about, because if Microsoft is perfectly fine with just making a standard laptop, when do they make a maybe not exactly standard PC? And of course, you know, the the question there, where could they go with that? There's a variety of ways. I mean, they could try and go with a, what is it like a? I think they call it the Mac Mini. That's just like a little box you plug in with a, you know, the uh, monitor and the, of course you know AC power. And it's just a little Macintosh computer just in a tiny little box. I don't really like, know too much about it, but like I could see them maybe doing something like that. Uh, if this if this is targeted at education, which is very wise to target, um, well, I should say their software is targeting education much more. And the laptop, one could sort of make that argument. Maybe, maybe not. Um, they're certainly making that, that, that play. But if they can... <clears throat> What they could do is come up with like a little four hundred dollar nuck, you know, like a you know um, a tower, which is not a tower. It's a little puck type thing, uh, almost like an IoT device that you use that you know Microsoft branded, and you get that in the schools. I think that would be fantastic. At that, I think that could that could work fine. We're really speculating way into the future. It's not really worth it on this show. Um, we should probably run down some specs here. Um, it does start at an i5. Uh, the the base model for a thousand bucks has an i5 with four gig of RAM and a uh, what is it a one uh, what is it one twelve ter one twelve terabyte I think I got to look at it and wow not one twelve terabyte one <laughs> okay that that yeah one twelve uh, gig. I guess what it is. Do I need to actually look this up? I, I think I think you need to. I think I but should. I, yeah. As you as you do that, I will say I really don't think they should have included four gigs of RAM on the base model. I, it's de I've, and I, I'm ec kind of echoing what many people have already said or seen, mm -hmm. but they really should have had the base model at it for a thousand bucks. It should have been eight gigs. There, there's no way around that. I mean, I will crap on Apple for having very overpriced products and I will and I can do the same for Microsoft I'm afraid 
just for $1,000, you do not include stripped down windows. Even if you're offering a free upgrade for a while, listen, you should just include the full thing to, to begin with. You also don't include only 4 gigs of RAM. The rest of the specs seems respectable enough, but putting 4 gigs on a Windows machine now, especially one for 1000 bucks, I, I think my friend Tom Hounsell put it, put it well when he said you might as well drive a car with square wheels. Well, um, many people have that opinion, and I do not disagree with them, but I will counterpoint that if this is as smooth and efficient and as you know, sandboxed as clean of a device, you know, Panos kept saying it's going to run as well. Uh, the first, you know, as you know, the first day you get it when you're, what do you say? When you're typing up your college entrance, entrance, uh, essay or something, uh, to when you walk across the aisle and get your diploma or something. Walk across yeah, that, the aisle that was about the stage. The, yeah. 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 That was about um, the same quote. Um, the point being that this thing, the performance is going to be very good because it is windows 10 S and many people have made that well, point. That I mean, is, uh, the thing me, about Windows 10 S is that it's being marketed as lighter than it is, because with Centennial apps are still able to put to go auto run at startup. I I, I do I agree with that. I I, I get it. Um, it's it's really just the weight of regular Windows with fewer apps to make that weight even more. I mean. It, it can't run every Win32 app, yeah. And UWP doesn't have the same performance impact at startup as Win32 is. That is a good point. However, Centennial apps can still have some of that impact. Maybe not the full thing, but it's still a chance. Yeah. I mean, just... Oh, man. There's just so much stuff where this real... Windows 10S is really being marketed as something that it isn't. It's being I, mar I mean, well, maybe not fully marketed by Microsoft themselves, but I keep see people saying, it's lightweight, it's light, it's lightweight. No, it's just got, it's got less of a chance to be as heavy as some normal Windows installations. I can just say that in my wife's application, for example, I think that she could be satisfied with a thousand dollar four gig device. Um, doesn't mean that, I'm just saying, I think it's, even though it's a throwback at this point, I don't think it's necessarily out of place. I think it still has its place there. Um, we'll finish up on the specs here. The Core i5, of course, with 4 gig of RAM, it is the 128 gig. I don't know what I was thinking before. Um, the uh, You have a Core i7, which has, <clears throat> you can get it either in 16 or 32, or well, 8 or 16 gig uh, configurations as a 256 gig um, storage. And they have a 512 as well with the, um, with this, uh, let's see here. Which, where's the one in the middle here? There's a fifth. There's a thirteen hundred dollar one. That's the i i five with eight gig. That's right. I five with eight gig is uh, thirteen hundred bucks, and uh, that's probably, in my opinion, going to be the most popular one for most people. I don't know if you if if you were investing this money into it, which one would would fit your needs best? Uh, well, really, <laughs> I mean. I don't know. I mean, at this, I really do believe that I would for the pri for that money, I would just go with a completely different device. I mean, yeah, I love the Microsoft Surface brand. I love the design of the Surface laptop. I do not love the price for the specs. I mean, I could. I mean, for some of the price of some of that stuff, I mean, could prob. Let's. See, I don't know. Maybe you could end up with a better Surface Book for that for some of the prices there. I mean, it depends. Certainly could get, like, I think it maybe, I think XPS 13 would fit in around that price range and have better specs as well, depending on the model you got. So, like, I mean, I'm, I'm just not seeing too much of a reason to go for this. It does look good, and I certainly want one. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie, but there's, a, I, I guess, really, the best way to describe value is price and power and so i'm seeing a lot of price but not enough power for that price with some of these i don't know i mean it's it's, it's thin you can fit in so much and thinness and how hard it is to fit certain things in that does count towards the price i get that but i don't know i have a i'll take a different stance on it and, and while your point is is valid and, and appeals to my 
uh, logical side of the brain here. Um, this is competing with Apple's laptop lineup. It, it is quite literally with the pricing and the the features specs. I mean, it's pretty close. You know, in many cases, you could say it's a good competitor. Um, Apple sells their devices because because they're they're gorgeous. People want them. People feel it. It is almost like a you know, it's an accessory, a college accessory or whatever you want to call it. It's even like a, a badge of honor or something like that. Not a badge of honor. What do you call it? Badge of um, overindulgence. And so purchasing this Surface laptop could be just like a Surface Pro, for example. You might not need all that power. You might not need the portability. You might almost never disconnect the laptop or the, the um, might never disconnect the keyboard on a Surface Pro, for some, for example but it's still a great device that you're willing to pay a little bit extra for just to have and to show it off. Um, so I think that's the other side of this. I mean, so basically the fire festival market fire festival. Oh, you didn't Bur see that news burning man. I don't know. What do you know? Uh, to fill it in for anyone who didn't know what the fire festival was, a bunch of rid a bunch of rich Instagram kids paid up to twelve thousand dollars to get stuck on a private island. What? Uh, I will fill you in on more of this stuff after recording, but yeah, basically the people who spend far too much money on things they don't need. Okay. They, or so most alter Americans. Alter alternatively, the people who would spend twelve thousand bucks to see Blink One Eighty Two. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, let's <laughs> sidetrack, so right. but you get the idea, I think. All right. So if you want to get this device and you're a student, you can maybe get it for ten percent off. So instead of a thousand bucks for the base model, you might be able to get it for nine hundred bucks. Um hey, that's something. Yeah. I mean that, that's that's better. Not mm -hmm. good, but better. <laughs> yeah. So of course the Surface laptop and these other devices that come with surf with windows 10 s on it they can be upgraded for free for the 50 50 bucks uh, that is through the end of the year so what is um yeah through december and um i guess that's a good thing that's definitely a good thing i have not quite figured out um it isn't readily apparent how i can get windows 10 s on one of my current devices you there's, can't there's 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 hacky ways to do it, uh, I'm sure. Well, but they're not readily no. available and not Windows, maybe... Windows 10 S is com its complete own SKU, and you cannot do downgrades. Like you can't go from Windows 10 Pro to Windows 10 Home. So, and the same rule applies. This is like, I I th I mean, you go directly from uh, S to Pro, but I think it's classified even below Windows 10 Home. Although it does have BitLocker available, which Windows 10 Home does not. I think that it would even be classed below it just because it's got so little there. Well, based off of the uh, the rundown of different specifications on there and features, uh, many people are placing it between home and pro. Um, but that's I that's mean, fair. I mean, but but it is yeah. kind of a step between in some areas because again, it does have BitLocker, but it also, of course, lacks a bunch of pro features and it also lacks a bunch of home features. So it's like. I guess maybe a sidestep more than even a thing between. It's like a step aside from home. So Microsoft has millions of people running insider builds right now. Fast ring, slow ring, um, um, release preview and everything. When, <laughs> how are they going to do insider on this? They well, need, to, gonna, they need well, to do people it are gonna op, Well, I think it's pretty easy. People are going to buy a Surface laptop. People are going to buy a... No, there's third-party devices. I don't know if we put it in here, but there's third-party devices from Acer that start at 300 bucks, which are going to run Windows 10s. Well, it's going to be easy. You buy one of those Windows 10s devices and you opt into the Insider program. It is confirmed that they will work in the Insider program, just like any other Windows device. So, I mean, that's that. It's so, like, Andy, are it you is doing, not. Are um, you doing well, this? I I guess. I mean, it's not very different from regular Windows. It's just it's like. Windows 10 Home and Windows 10 Pro, I mean, they do have some differing features, so they do have some differing bugs related to those features. Like, for example, you're not going to have Hyper-V problems on Windows 10 Home, but that's just because the feature isn't there. You're not going... There's not really any exclusive features, per se, with Windows 10 Cloud. 
or Windows 10s again. I gotta get that uh, memorized. But Windows 10s is regular Windows 10, except it has Bit BitLocker like Windows 10 Pro. It is locked to Microsoft Edge as the default browser. It is locked to Bing as the default search engine, or only search engine rather. And you can't run any Win32 app you want on it. You also can't sideload apps. And the there's not really much to break regarding that. I mean, the rest is just going to be exactly the same as all other versions of Windows when testing. So it's not a big different thing. What I, what I was what I was asking is that if you want to run, if you're interested in this running uh, Windows Insider for Windows 10 S, are you going to go out and buy a laptop just to do that? Because I'm not. No, no, I don't see why anyone would. Because again, it's going to be the same features across all platforms. Like we're going to get Windows 10 S devices are going to get the same updates, the same days, just like anybody else. It's not a different architecture. It's just a different SKU. Just like how Windows 10 for education, well, Windows 10 for education enterprise might have some different stuff depending on your organization. So maybe not. That's not the best comparison, but uh. I believe it's Windows 10 N, which is aimed at South Korea. I think it, I think that's what it's aimed at, and the only, and it's to fit some of their laws there. So certain certain things like media players aren't included by default. And so like something like that, it can join in the. I'm pretty sure it can join in the Insider program just like any other edition of Windows. I mean, it's all it's all the same. Well, think of it this way: say say Microsoft wants to get Chrome, where well, they want to get Google to to build. Uh, Centennial or UWP app. To That's put... not possible. The, okay. the, the if Windows they... Store rules flat out. The Windows Store rules flat out ban any rendering edge engine other than Edge HTML. So Chrome is not coming to the Windows Store unless Microsoft removes that rule. In fact, a cr Eric Laws, uh, I believe he currently works on Chrome. I haven't checked his Twitter bio in a while, but you know he 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 just tweeted out a screenshot of that. There is no way a competing browser can successfully arrive in the Windows Store. Every single browser that will ever reach the Windows Store, and there will likely be very few of them as long as this rule is here, they are going to be edge at the core. And this is similar to Apple's own rules. I don't, I don't know if Chrome is in the uh, Apple Store, but I doubt, or iTunes, whatever they call their App Store for Mac, but I. There's pretty much no way that it can be. I don't know if they would give them an exception. I don't know if Microsoft would even give well, them an exception. Well, are you saying that it, it cannot or that it may not? I'm saying that unless Microsoft either gives Google or Firefox or Mozilla an exception, or if, you know, gives exceptions to certain developers, or if they remove this rule, no other browsers that are meaningful in any way will come to the Windows Store. Because at their core, every single one of them will be running Edge HTML. HTML. It's all going to be the same thing at its heart. Just like how, you know, some browsers are built off Chromium. They're really just a different shell for Chromium on the inside. It's, well, I, I do not understand that well enough. And I've okay, actually I guess... heard from, from plenty of people lately that it is in Microsoft and Google's best interest to get Chrome on here. Well, for uh, sure. It is definitely in Microsoft's best interests, not and necessarily in, Google's. Why? Because Google is missing out on that entire market then, especially well, the schools. Chrome is, Chrome is still the most used market, or most used browser out and there. It will, and Chromebooks are still selling like hotcakes in schools. Although Microsoft did mention that they did start outselling Chromebooks over the past year, so that might change, but I still see far more Chromebooks in use from my personal experience with seeing some things so, so i'm just saying that um google wants their services everywhere they don't necessarily and that's why they make chromebooks they don't their goal isn't to make money on chromebooks they're, they're, i mean their their goal is to get google or you know the search engine itself and g suite and all that other crap um Allo or Allo, what is it? Allo, Allo, Hello. <laughs> they basically um, gave up on Allo and Duo yeah. already, which is hilarious but, to me. I mean, it's people talk about Microsoft's failures daily, but I think Allo and Duo. Well, actually, people talk about Allo and Duo being failures daily as well, and they just. I don't want to say Microsoft tier failure, but like if look look at if you, I mean just. 
they Google put so many resources and effort into Allo and Duo, and then they just dropped flat on release day. I mean, they were literally dead on arrival, and it was hilarious. Well, I guess now is a really good time to bring up this other hilarious Google flop, which was on Wednesday. This huge phishing scam. Uh, well, that for... wasn't necessarily a flop on Google's end. That was an that was an attack that was very interesting in delivery and also was easily stopped by Google themselves because of how it was d- done. So, I mean, it wasn't exactly a flop on their end at all. Well, there were at least I'd say thirty percent of the people in my office had had this affect them. I mean, that's a that's a I think that's a pretty big. I mean, like if it made the nightly news like which it did which i don't watch the news but everyone at work told me the next day hey what you said you you warned us about this the day before it happened um anyway i'm just saying like that i think it was a really yeah, interesting just timing like, yeah. with windows 10 s especially the education aspect of it when yeah, it, it does true. it did uh gen- was generated from google's um educational I don't know what you call it. Their back end, like their, like just sum it up for what people, for the people who don't know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> on, on Wednesday, there was an attack that was a phishing scam, and it was a very elaborate one. It was an attempt to get uh, various. It was an attempt to get authorization for your Google account. The w- way it would work was that it would send you all sorts of. Uh, it would send various emails to people saying, "Hey, so and so has invited you." to edit this Google document. And of course, it looked like a legitimate Google email. If you checked the email it was sent from, you would know that it wasn't, but you would open it up and it would present you with a page to authorize an app. Now the thing is, unlike the usual page for app authorization, which, well, for these scams rather, it wasn't hosted on another site. Excuse me. And when that happens, that just eats your that just basically eats your Google login. That's what it does. And then it'll send it to whoever is running that attack. This case was an actual legitimate login page from Google themselves. And the way that it would work would be, of course, you would authorize this app to access your email account. Who knows what it I don't know what it was accessing exactly. I didn't memorize its permissions page, but maybe it would send itself to other people. I don't know. But you would give it access to your Google account, and then you'd be re- redirected to a pretty legitimate-looking Google Docs page. And then, of course, you know that whoever made that app could do whatever they wanted. And the the Achilles heel here was that Google could then disable that attack instantly. Anyways, we're not a Google podcast, but well, let me just let me wrap that up with they certainly did not disable it instantly. It was at least an hour and a half from when from when I got my email and responded to the person that. You know, their it, was, it was out. For, it was out for maybe four to five hours at mo- four yeah. four hours at most, I think. And then, um, even then, after that, they said, "Well, just don't open your email." Well, don't open anything. Gmail said this: "Don't open any Google Docs." Well, that in itself is pretty damning, right there. But uh, I, that's fair. It was not instant. If you're saying they flip a switch and they they killed it, uh, that took a long time to find that switch, relatively. Um, I think it's a lot of egg on egg on the face, but of course that's kind of what we're rooting for. Uh, that's just the way we are as fans of oh, yeah. Microsoft, I guess. I guess I'm okay with that. I don't know. I mean, I I just hope that every company has their successes and that their failures are short lived. Personally, I agree. Yeah. All right. So what else do we have to talk about here? Plenty, of course. Windows 10 yeah. S itself. Let's see. You did mention about the w- yeah, web browser. I mean, it's kind of funny that we've uh, kind of talked about like every detail about Windows 10 S except for officially saying it itself windows 10 s we've talked about it there we go <laughs> yeah um but, I, th- I mean to sum it up again for people who would like a recap windows 10 s is a lockdown version of windows 10 previously known as by its code name windows cloud it was never it was never officially mentioned by that name on the tuesday microsoft event you know for microsoft edu it was officially unveiled said it would be coming to devices aimed at schools as well as the Surface Laptop. The differences between Windows 10 S and regular Windows 10 are pretty slim, although pretty significant at the same time. There's few differences, but they're major. Those differences are that it cannot run any Win32 app out there. It has to be either a Centennial, it has to be a Centennial app in the store. Additionally, you know, it only runs apps from the store. 
you're not sideloading UWP even. So it's aimed at UWP desktop apps, Centennial apps in the store, Microsoft's own programs that ship with Windows 10, and it uh, you're, you're not going to be installing this on your PC on your own. It is completely going to just be shipping on new devices. Your browser is locked to Edge, your search engine is locked to Bing, or a regional browser depending on wherever you are, if, and maybe Bing is not fully available there. Let me add to let me add to that for a moment. As far as the default browser being Edge, yeah, of course Microsoft wants to do that. I get that, and it does piss a lot of people off because they want to run Chrome. Um, it you does can't, not. You can't run Chrome on this, anyways. But it also just okay, shows. Okay. Like, okay. I don't. So it also they, kind of shows to me that Microsoft doesn't want Chrome on the store. I mean, aside from the fact that they do have that uh, limit blocking non-Edge HTML stuff, just it shows that they really don't care if it comes to the store or not. They're just going to force Edge on people and hope they like it. Well, I guess uh, there's other people with pretty strong opinions other than that, Andy. And I um, I do not understand, like we just said, I don't understand the technical aspects of it to really know how feasible okay. it is. But I'm saying it's impo- if- it's, it is completely impossible to bring Google Chrome to the store. Microsoft has a total block on any other browser that is running on any rendering engine engine other than Microsoft Edge's rendering engine. To sum up how browsers work, at their core there is a rendering engine. Engine. I'm chewing my words tonight. Google Chrome. Oh boy, I'm trying to remember exactly what Chrome's is called. I mean, Chromium is the application, but I believe it's WebKit? Or is that Apple's? Uh, WebKit Chromium. is... WebKit yeah, is web, one of the, web, Chrome uses yeah, web WebKit, is, along with some web, other browsers. Web, yeah. WebKit, web, yeah, WebKit is primarily used by Safari, I guess, but WebKit, Blink, one of them is a fork of the other. I'm not 100% certain at the moment. It's 1141 as a recording here. But basically, at their core, they are their own thing. Microsoft Edge, at its core, is co- it's Edge HTML. That's the, that is the name of the rendering engine. Edge is the app. Edge HTML is the rendering engine. And other browsers in the store, like the UC browser, the app is the UC browser, the rendering engine is Edge HTML. I think that's able to understand. It's like you got you have the shell and you have what's inside. Okay. And what's inside has to be the same as Microsoft Edge, or it's not going in the store. Well, in the presentation, Microsoft was clear that uh, you could um, you could still download other browsers. Um, no, I it does not saying that they're there yet or whatever, but let's say, for example, if somehow it got there, but you still have the default browser of edge. That means if you click a link in an app, it can only open an edge. It does not mean that you cannot launch another browser that somehow snuck its way in or whatever you want to call that. As far as the default search provider, it does not mean that you cannot go to in edge, go to google.com that be your homepage and ev- run every search through there. There's no limitation on that at all. It just means you can't run Google through Cortana, for example. Um, and so, although, although really Google through Cortana has been blocked for a while. It's just like, that's my it's point. primarily, that's my point, it's primarily it's aimed at the search bar different. in edge and internet Explorer, exactly. which of course, internet Explorer is not expected to be in here. Um, I, do, I actually think it was mentioned that it might still be. I'm not sure though. So if you so is Internet Explorer now an app in the store? Well, it's Microsoft is still going to include their basic applications with it. I mean, even with Windows RT, they included Notepad. I mean, that is, isn't I mean, something I'd heard about yet. So all right, no, this, well, I mean, Microsoft is still going to be including their basic apps. I mean, it, it might not be Centennial, but no, stuff like uh, like I don't know, like. Uh, Nope. Again, Notepad. It's WordPad. That stuff just comes with Windows. I guess I don't think of Internet Explorer and you know to be the same thing as Notepad. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a default Windows app. The default Windows apps are staying. This these restrictions are about third party stuff. Uh, maybe I missed that part. I guess to basically sum it up, Microsoft decide what Microsoft says what goes in their own castle. You know. Well. That's that's <laughs> that's how castles and castle owners. Uh, that's the dynamic that happens there. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft does have a new Surface Arc mouse. This is nice. Um, it's been around for a few years now. It's that one that lays flat. It kind of a, a very uh, portable device. You can just slip into a coat pocket or you know easily into a laptop bag. Doesn't isn't bulky. And then of course it kind of curves up and clicks into place. 
Uh, they have both Bluetooth version and just the little the um, the the USB wireless nub or whatever you want to call that. And um, I, I have one. I like it. And this newer one has both a scroll. I don't know what they call it. Not a scroll bar, maybe, but also a swipe section where you can swipe left and right as far as um, panning yeah. and things like that. And of course, okay, yeah. And then of course, clicking. You can, as far as I know, you can still click both sides of it, but there's no uh, separating seam between the two, the left and right sides, of what you would think is your your clicking buttons. It does look interesting to me because it's like they basically just strapped a touchpad onto, well, just like they they basically took the uh, front half off the old one and just slapped a touchpad on, which looks interesting to me. I really want to see how this goes like i mean i haven't looked into too many of the details of it i mostly just saw the uh images of it in the uh surface laptop stuff because this wasn't this wasn't talked about much at the event actually i don't think they even mentioned it at all it was kind of like a silent announcement where they showed this next to the surface laptop and then panos tweeted it later and it looks cool i i wonder if they're gonna have like touchpad tricks you're gonna be able to do with that you know like uh, the finger combos to gestures um, yeah gestures to minimize and maximize all open windows. That stuff would be cool. I, I want to see where they go with that. It really would be. I think that's a wise move. So, Andy, are you using Spotify right now or currently? Uh, yeah. I, I pay 15 bucks a month for the family plan. It works out very well. So that was another thing that got announced. Not a biggest, big, big announcement, but Microsoft showed off, you know, Spotify with the Surface Dial and said that Spotify is coming to the Windows Store as a Project Centennial app. And I, I don't remember exactly, but I believe it was mentioned to be coming in early June, which should be very nice. I wonder if they're going to be taking advantage of any of the functions they'll get from that, like, uh, you know, like a live tile. So that should be cool. Mm -hmm. There is a new build out. Um... I don't really know how much of this. Maybe Andy, if you want to cover a couple yes. items, but we do have yeah, a I lot can, left yeah, to we, uh, cover. We we yeah, we got a lot left to cover in very little time. This is build sixteen one eighty eight. It comes with some new features for PCs. It just came out today, and to the fast ring, it comes with additional features for Microsoft Edge's PDF reader, including PDF form filling, PDF annotations, and new table of contents, better viewing and navigation. Additionally, Edge has gained Windows Defender Application Guard for the Enterprise, which will uh, allow you to just go maximum level of protection for malware and zero-day attacks against Windows in a window of its own. Uh, there's a Ninja Cat icon for the Windows Insider Program and settings. Oh, boy. That's, uh, if it's the one I'm thinking of, I am not a fan. But PDF stuff, big thumbs up on that. Yeah, and... PDF stuff's cool. Ninja Cat stuff is not. Cortana yep. settings have been integrated into settings. Wow. Reimagined magnifier setting. That is page. actually a big deal. Well, in my opinion, I, I like that Cortana is actually in settings instead of going into settings in Cortana for like adjusting Bluetooth if uh, on your phone. Um, well, whatever. Keep keep going. And additionally, they have uh, changed the Windows Update dialog for updates with a new interactive toast notification instead of the old modal. So yeah, it won't interrupt your work so much. Okay, and I'll go through a couple more. Additionally, there's a fastering update for uh, the Microsoft Photos app, and it's also worth noting that a similar update went out to the People app that adds elements of project, more than elements, it's bringing Project Neon to these apps. And the implementation of the Photos apps is identical to the implementation in Movies and TV. The People app one is interesting as the entire app is now acrylic, which is that blurred surface, so that's cool. And then uh, Surface Pro 4, a Surface Pro 4 refresh just got confirmed by Microsoft. Where uh, so they didn't? Do they didn't actually say this is a Surface Pro 4 refresh? They said Surface uh, in Shanghai, right? Maybe I missed me, that part. Er, of it. Let, let me see. Going, it says the Surface laptop is new today, and you might expect to see an update to Surface Pro 4 coming soon. So not a Surface Pro 5 update to Surface Pro 4. And this was said by, uh, oh boy, I hope I'm saying your name right, uh, Yusuf. Yusuf Mehdi, yeah, he was at he was in Atlanta. He did a, yeah, I think he was he did the, uh, the um, one of the CVP of uh, Windows and Devices Group and uh, confirmed that there would be one coming soon. And then after he did this, which he cited this in an interview, uh, there was a Microsoft event in Shanghai that got announced for May twenty third, and then Panos Panay tweeted about it with the Surface hashtag. So that basically confirms that we're probably going to be getting a new, uh, you know, Surface Pro, Pro four refresh on announced on the 23rd and brad sams said on twitter that apparently 
a couple of weeks ago, he said that a new Surface Pro 4 might be might be coming out on the 24th. So that there we go, I guess. So I guess I'm not seeing the direct correlation between the Surface event in Shanghai and the update to the Surface Pro 4. Well, I mean, so, I, guess, I guess I but they're holding us they're holding a Surface event right after uh, one of their employees says, "Oh yeah, there's going to be a Surface Pro 4 update coming soon." So I think that's pretty open and shut case, personally. Okay. Well, yeah, pro- probably. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I'm just saying that, um, well, whatever. It, it There's just a little a few holes in it. doesn't matter. Um, Nadella, Satya Nadella, obviously. Uh, Sarur had a really cool write-up, and he, he elaborated on it a little bit that I, I, I appreciated his slant. But the point was that he he talked about he had played a clip of Nadella saying how, yeah, we make phones right now, but the phones we're going to make in the future are not going to look like the phones of today. Now this is something that he we've been hearing for a while. It's just that it's kind of been quiet and really drowned out by all the, dare I say it, the fud and the the um, just naysaying and disappoint you know the people like myself people that are windows phone fans who want to see the next thing now of course we want it right now and it's difficult to be patient to wait for the next thing to come around microsoft obviously is trying to make a big play here i should say a wise long-term play and it's okay if they ease back into a certain market as opposed to try to catch up with right is what's right now it in the short term it's it's uh it looks kind of glim. I understand that. And hey, maybe what they're going to come out with is just junk anyway. Maybe we're getting our hopes too high. I, I, I will acknowledge that. But um, we've been hearing these little clues here and there. For, and now this is kind of a bigger clue from uh, Satya Nadella that there will be another mobile play. It's just, you know, he's basically saying it's probably not what you're expecting. That's my take on it. Are you? That's, yeah, that's fair. Okay. Okay. Then moving on quickly, uh, Twitter's Windows 10 app gets the new reply UI, which drove me crazy. Maybe you try to we- leave the website. We went over this saga weeks ago. It's crap, but the update's okay, I guess. They also improved the display of images and video and moments, live events page, and it supports multiple timelines. You can hold the control key and then click to create a new tab in the app. They've also added a tweets and replies tab to profiles. And then Microsoft's next big bot play is bringing bots to Bing, which will happen when you search for certain things, and they will pop up in a little window similar to Facebook Messenger bot tabs. It's, it's interesting. You can look at the article here. It's going to be in the show notes, you know, it's again titled Microsoft's next big bot play bringing bots to Bing. Go there, read that. It's a good article by Mahidi. And then finally, in the Xbox section, not too much this week, but Hulu is Hulu's live TV plan, which was announced yesterday or the day before, is come to do the Xbox One with an overhauled interface, which looks very good and is in line with the new design for all of their apps on all devices. It looks fantastic. And the Live TV package starts at $40 per month, goes up from there. For an extra $4 per month, you can opt out of commercials. However, if you'd like to upgrade your cr- to cloud DVR, you have to pay another $15 a month. The cost does build up, especially if you look at services like Sling, which starts at $20 a month, and PlayStation View, which starts at $30 per month. Again, though, at least the new u- user interface looks fantastic, and uh, do have to wonder if any of that will show up on the desktop version of the WP app, because same thing. And also, Halo Combat Evolved has entered the World Video Game Hall of Fame. It, and Halo Combat Evolved launched in 2001. With It was a launch title for the original Xbox, meaning that it released the same day as the system itself. It joins games like Donkey Kong, a few Pokemon titles, and Street Fighter II in the, in the Hall of Fame. All of them will be on permanent display at the Strong Museum in Ro- Ro- Rochester? 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 How, am I, how am I never able to pr- pronounce the city's name it's right? It's Rochester. Rochester. There we go. New York, where the World Video Game Hall of Fame was established in 2015 to recognize astounding achievements in the industry. Boom. You need to take a breath there? No, I think I'm good. Yeah. So we still actually, we're not over time, so. Oh, crap. I, I did it too, I did it too quickly. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I will add to the Bing Bot thing. Everyone is uh, slamming that, and maybe it's clunky. Maybe it's a little bit annoying and stupid, kind of like the Skype bot eh, on occasion. But I think this is still the future, even if it's annoying right now. 
it is a wise thing for for say well whatever it bots bots are i like bots i like bots they're just not mature yet but they're not going to get mature if they don't go out and try something that is it for this episode thank you for listening to this ms power user podcast be sure to follow the site on twitter at ms power user of course go to mspoweruser.com we have plenty of awesome articles and i really do um i really really value the people that put all the work into producing good content for the show for the site I produce very little content for the site, but I'm uh, thrilled to be involved with that. And Andy, you've been doing a great job lately, especially with some of the videos you put up. Uh, nice work, buddy. Make sure you, sub- you make sure you subscribe to the podcast with your favorite podcast aggregator, or you can play it from right from the site or even from our app in um, the MS Power User app. If you want to come, uh, if you want to interact with us individually, Twitter is at least my favorite medium. I'm on Twitter at Vernon E L, and Andy can be found at Fusion Fan Forty Five. I said it right this time. Yes, and it's kind of like my reluctantly favorite medium. I don't know if that totally works, but like, I don't necessarily hate it. I hate where it's going, and I wish there was a good alternative that would survive more than three days. I'm looking at you, Mastodon. <laughs> Fair enough. That is it. Take care, everyone. Have an awesome week. Yep.